Hi everyone, thanks for stopping on the Peace Garage. You know, sometimes I get to paint some really, really cool things. Right here I have two vibration dampeners, and they look like big shock absorbers, and that's actually what they are. They're huge shock absorbers, except they don't have springs on them and they're not going to go in a vehicle. Uh, these are made out of solid stainless steel, 316 solid stainless steel, and these are going to go on a crane, on, on an oil rig, in the North Sea, north of Norway. So, I have to paint these two with a special epoxy that have to withstand arctic, ice water, and salt water temperatures for 10 years. And I'm going to be using a really neat epoxy. It's a very expensive epoxy with very high solids in it to make sure that uh, these last for 10 years out in North Sea. So sometimes I get to paint things that are really cool. Not necessarily the painting is cool, but where they're going is really cool. These are $5,000 a piece. I'm painting four of them. And uh, you can see they're, they're huge. They got huge clevis ends on them. Uh, they weigh 100 pounds a piece. And uh, there's four of them that will be going on the crane. I'm painting two at a time because the company has to get them there and have to get on that crane as soon as possible. I'm painting two, they'll ship two, I'll paint another two. But the reason I'm, I'm, I, I'm doing this or I'm talking about painting these is that I'm talking about the epoxy painting process. Now, these are stainless steel, but you can do this regular steel. It really doesn't matter. And, and the reason I'm doing this is because a lot of people, a lot of guys ask me, or I get a lot of inquiries about powder coating frames. Now, I would never discourage anybody from doing powder coating on a frame because it is beautiful. It, it makes a durable finish. There's a lot of colors and it looks great. But there's one problem. If you chip your powder coated frame, you're driving down the road, something hit it and it chips, it's almost impossible to match the color. And it's really almost impossible to match the shine. So. When you do chip powder coating, it's very, very, very difficult to fix. So, the alternative is either paint it with a regular paint or an epoxy. The epoxy I'm using on this is extremely hard. It's a very, very hard finish. It's a PPG product. Um, I'll put the, the name up there. So, it's a PSX 700 primer or a paint epoxy. And then it's going to be painted first with a metal etching primer that etches into stainless steel. But any, any metal can use a metal etching primer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prime these first. I'm going to put two coats of this primer on, let it seal, and I have to let it uh, etch, and then let it cure. Two coats of that, and then they're going to be painted a bright red. It's going to be really neat, but it's, a, it's an oxide, red oxide primer. Uh, I'll show you what the primer looks like. It's going to dry dull. Now, after that cures, I'll put the epoxy on, and I'll show you how to mix epoxies, because it's very important to know how to mix them, and they, sometimes they come very, very thick, and knowing how to mix them is really important. So I'm going to prime them paint them and then we'll see how it looks when I'm done. This is the primer. It's a uh, DuPont, I'm sorry, it's a PPG product. It's called AmeriCoat 385. This is the curing agent. You can see with a high solids epoxy, it's almost like butter. It is really, really thick. This is the curing agent and this is the primer or the, the mix. And you can see how thick that is. And it has to be sprayed thick like that in order to maintain the solids so that it etches into the metal and can withstand years and years of salt water abuse. But I mean, this is this is it's almost like uh, you wouldn't think you'd be able to spray this, but you can. And this is this is really like a uh, almost like a latex caulking than it is a putty, uh, than it is a primer. But it's really thick. So that's what that looks like. I'm gonna mix this. It mixes 50/50, and then I'll uh, spray a coat on there, and I'll show you how it looks uh, after I prime it. You see that this particular epoxy primer dries uh, flat as well. Uh, the uh, just a red oxide primer, but it's an epoxy primer and it dries flat, almost like a base coat. So now I have to paint these with the epoxy top coat. And let's see how thick that is to mix. This is the color epoxy, and this is a little different. This is the uh, PSX 700 coating, and it's not as thick as the primer, but it still is fairly thick. And the key to painting a material or using a material this thick is you're not going to get a big fan, spray fan out of it. So you have to use a, a very small, turn down your gun to a point, a little over a point, and uh, control the material so you don't get a, a big splotch and then keep the gun moving. So it's just, you paint a thick material like this, you just paint it with the, uh, a small point, and then you keep the gun moving to get the coat even. You, you don't hold it too close because it'll put a ton of material on very fast but the key is just to keep it moving and uh, use the smallest point as possible and the paint will go on nice and smooth. So, and here's what the finished epoxy looks like. 
and it's very shiny. This color happens to be RAL 3002 red. Now there are a couple of advantages painting with epoxy. Number one, since you mix it two parts, it's going to dry very, very hard. and It's going to be very durable, number one. Number two, it takes a little longer to dry than regular paint, so it is going to flow and is going to be a lot smoother and shinier than uh, trying to work a clear. And these are very shiny. The reason there's a little orange peel there is because the primer underneath, the metal etching primer, had to be put on extremely thick. But the paint itself is very shiny. I'll see if I can show you. The side of this clevis here has a it's very shiny. You can see epoxy is very shiny. So there are a lot of advantages to painting with epoxy. And uh, it, it's, it's a beautiful material. And if you're going to paint a frame, you can't really beat a good epoxy paint. So you see, when you paint uh, different parts, metal parts, your frame, subframe components, uh, any kind of metal part, you have many, many options. For this particular project, they were stainless steel, but it really doesn't matter because they make acid etching or metal etching primers for all kinds of substrates. I use the uh, PPG Amarco 385. This is mixed one to one and uh, it's very thick but there is a little bit of reducer and I was able to spray that. It, it, it sprays thick but it, is a, it was an excellent primer and the top coat was another PPG product called PSX 700 FD. It's a very durable, very hard primer. If you paint it on your frame uh, uh, you will have excellent results. It, it, shi it dries extremely shiny and you have a million colors billion colors, whatever color you want, the color can be mixed to whatever your specifications are, whatever color you want. If you have a sample, they can mix it. Where powder coat, if you powder coat your frame, you're, you're limited to the colors that are powders, okay? So, if you want to do a epoxy coat, it's equally as, as durable. Uh, it can be repaired. Now, it can't be repaired like a regular top coat where if you if you spray it, you can melt it and blend it. It's, it's a lot more difficult to blend, but if you do have a chip, you can fill it in, the color will match perfectly, and you won't run the risk of peeling off the paint that's already there. I've done it with powder coats before where you try and touch it up, and the, uh, the, the chemicals and the uh, acetones or whatever that are in the paint will lift up the powder coat to make an even bigger mess than you had when you had a chip. It's just a suggestion. I would never discourage you from doing whatever you want to do with your frame. It definitely is cool to have a powder coated frame, but if you want to have a cheap alternative, you can buy this uh, two gallon, uh, the two gallon kit, which makes two gallons of primer, is only like $150, and the red epoxy was about $250 to make, to make a gallon. So that's about how much you would need. So roughly about, let's say, $450, you can paint your frame with an epoxy that's extremely durable and will last a very, very long time. Or you can get a powder coated, which would cost a couple thousand dollars. And if you don't want to go that route, the epoxy will give you the same exact result and will last a forever. You take care of it, it's forever, it's fixable. I'm just giving my opinion on what I've done and giving you some options in case you're going to work on your frame or paint your frame for your project. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, please send me an email, give me a call, and I really appreciate you watching the videos. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.